Hello, hi everyone, and welcome to our Industry 4.0 Network event. Uh, my name is Nicola Charini, and I am the event organizer. Um, first of all, uh, thank you to all participants and all the people who helped me to uh, organizing the event and to advertising the event on social media and on social networks. Especially thanks, thanks to uh, all the presenters who are going to, um, to, to present their solutions today. Um, today we have also the opportunity to, to get in touch with, uh, with people, with uh, uh, professionals, with experts worldwide who are interested in our offering and seeking uh, 4.0 solutions. Um, for this reason, you are very welcome to interact as much as possible through a Zoom meeting. Uh, so first of all, uh, for people who are not familiar with the system, let me introduce uh, some features, uh, how you can interact. So uh, in the navigation bar, you have the participants uh, um, panel. If you click on them, you have the you can see all participants in the event. Uh, so at the moment, you are all in uh, on uh, on mute mode. Um, I keep this to avoid any background noise when presenters are going to to present their solution. Uh, but of course, if you want to interact, if you want to uh, to ask questions, feel free to raise your hand, uh, and uh, and uh, I will allow you to to talk. You can also you also have the option to uh, to give some quick feedback like yes, no, go slower, go faster, um, like, uh, dislike, uh, clap. Uh, all type of feedback, which is very helpful for people who are going to present. Another way to interact with, uh, with the audience is to um, use the chat. Uh, so if you click on the chat button, um, uh, you, have, uh, uh, you have the chat where people can uh, interact with everyone or with, uh, with, uh, uh, with the specific people. So for example, here, you, um, you can also uh, select the right, uh, uh, only one person to talk to. And also you can share files. So um, what, you, what I propose to people who are going to present their solution after the presentation, you can share the file here. Um, so when for the presenter, last thing for the presenter, uh, when, when you are going to present, please raise your hand. So I will unmute yourself and uh, I will allow you to, to, uh, to share your screen, your presentation. Uh, that's it. Uh, I hope you guys, you are hearing me well. So I have the opportunity to use the uh, the participant panel, can you hear me well? Uh, you can say yes or no. Okay, thanks Gabriele. Gabriele is one of our presenter later on. Other people are going to, do you hear me well? Yes, okay, in the chat, great. This is the right approach. Matteo, Anna, thank you. So everything is set up correctly. Uh, so let's see today's agenda. Um, so let's see the chat. Yes, great. Thanks. Uh, so today, uh, after a quick introduction, I will show you some statistics about this event. And after that, uh, uh, every presenter is going to, um, to present their solution. Speaking of which, uh, let's see if uh, everyone is here already. Uh, so we have Assistom from France and we should have Andre. 
Andrea, are you here with us? Uh, can you just uh, type a message or uh, uh, raise your hand or reply yes in our panel? I think Andre is not here. I hope he's joining soon. Then we have uh, Christina from uh, uh, another reality uh, from Italy, which is going to present at half past uh, 11. Then we have uh, Sedio uh, from Czech Republic, uh, who's going to present uh, its solution at uh, quarter to 12. At 12, uh, we have uh, Alma Expert Time and we have Gabriele here already. Sorry, we have then at uh, quarter past 12, Applied IT. I see Ignacio already in the chat. And uh, last but not least, we have uh, Skills for I, which is, it is my solution I'm going to present at uh, half past 12. Uh, we have also uh, last 15 minute sessions to is more networking sessions where you are very free to share contacts, to share questions, doubts, thoughts. Uh, I will unmute yourself if you like, uh, uh, in order that you can share uh, all, all, the, all the thoughts. So first of all, uh, uh, as I said, I'm Nicola Cellini. I'm the um, owner of Acellini Training Consulting and the organizer of this event. We are a consulting organization uh, who was founded in 2019, just before the COVID. And we are based in Spain, actually. And uh, our mission is support organization to improve and innovate their manufacturing capabilities worldwide. We provide support worldwide. Uh, we have three main areas of expertise. So the first is a new product development, which also includes uh, innovation management. We have manufacturing capability management support and industry 4.0 and smart factory. So why the event? What is the reason of this event? Well, the main reason is uh, uh, it's very explain, well explained in this chart. It's called the market law. I don't know your experience, guys, but my experience was that uh, also technology is changing exponentially, so it's changing very fast. But on the other hand, organizations are changing logarithmically, which means very slow, which means that uh, we have a gap between technology and organization, and we need to fill in this gap. So. The reason of this event is that we need to adapt our organization to new scenarios as quickly as possible. But the good thing is that uh, there are plenty of solutions uh, on the market worldwide. So for this reason, the event, the event aims to show uh, some 4.0 solutions already available worldwide, uh, and also to create a network of uh, experts. So when you pre-register our event, uh, I ask you to, um, to, to say, to, to, to register also what type of, in, in which technology are you interested in? These were the options. Uh, so uh, of course, Internet of Things, Big Data Analytics, which also include the machine learning and data, data analysis and uh, artificial intelligence, for example. Uh, virtual reality, the augmented reality devices, autonomous robots, additive manufacturing, cloud computing, IT system integrations, simulations, cybersecurity, or other technology. So these are the results. So 30% of the audience is interested in uh, IoT. 14% is interested in big data analytics. 10% in virtual reality and augmented reality, 9% in autonomous robots, 8% in simulation, mainly focus on factory simulation, IT system integration, 7%, cloud computing, 7%, additive, 7% as well, other technologies, and 2% uh, cybersecurity. 
some basic statistics. So about 80 participants uh, applied register for this event, 43 at 11 and five and 37 participants at, uh, at uh, 5 p.m. So as you know, there is another uh, session at 5 p.m. with other solutions. And uh, we have in total, we are about 29 countries worldwide. And 47% were uh, business accounts and 5% were educational accounts. Uh, and the rest were standard accounts like a Gmail or Yahoo. But to target in the audience uh, uh, more accurately, I will ask you to reply now um, uh, uh, to, uh, to reply to a poll. Um, I hope you guys, you, you see the poll. Please uh, reply on the chat if you can see it or uh, uh, on our uh, participant panel. Uh, okay, so in this poll, uh, the first question is, what type of business are you in? So the option are manufacturing organization, healthcare, information technology, infrastructure, consulting, education, schools, universities, academies, etc. You are a student or you are, you are not in business, but uh, you are just you are here for private interest or others. And the other question is, why are you here? So one option is that you are looking for new solutions, offering new solutions. I'm just interested in what the market is offering, looking for business opportunities, or just curious. So I will give you just the other, uh, let's say 20 seconds to reply. So at the moment, most of you guys are in the information and technology. Two of you are students. And while you're here, just interested what the market is offering. 10 out of 12 replied. Uh, okay, and polling, share results. These are the results. So most of you guys are in the manufacturing organizations and the information technology. And uh, uh, then two of you are students and uh, uh, one is a consulting company. While you're here, most of you guys are just interested in what, to see what the market is offering and then looking new solution, offering new solutions and uh, looking for business opportunities as well. So this is the audience that is participating now live at this event. Um, okay, we said that we are about uh, 29 uh, country register to this event and 43% are from Europe, 29% are from uh, Asia and 13% uh, uh, are from Africa. 9% for from uh, Northern America, 7% from uh, South America. And uh, actually nobody from uh, uh, um, Oceania. So we said mostly of you guys are from Europe, uh, most of them of which are from Italy, then 17% are from Spain, then we have uh, people from uh, um, France, Germany, UK, Belgium, the Netherlands, Finland, Czech Republic, um, Austria, Romania, and Hungary. In Asia, most of the people who subscribed were from India, then 10% from Indonesia, 5% uh, Bangladesh, China, Emirates, Qatar, uh, and uh, Malaysia. In Africa, most of the people were from uh, Morocco and from Tunisia, Egypt, and Algeria. And some of them are from uh, uh, Ghana and Zambia. 
Northern America, which I think most of them are uh, at 5 p.m. session. Uh, 77 67% to from the US and 33 from Canada. South America, uh, most of you guys are from Mexico and 20% from Brazil. That's it. So we are a little bit late at the moment, but uh, I think uh, we are ready to go. So I will stop to share my screen. Uh, so we have now uh, a system uh, from France. Uh, André, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you, André. Hello. Uh, very Hello welcome. Yeah. Are you wel welcome to our event. Thank you for presenting your very good solution. I know your solution. I talked with your partners and I, I was astonished with the solutions. So here you are. Here, here you can present. I think you can share your screen. Let me know if you can. I'm doing it right now, so I'm going just to go into a presentation mode. Perfect. Can you see me now with your presentation? Yes, I can see you well. Okay. So, shall I start? Yes, please. Nicola? Okay. Please, yeah. yes. So, hello everyone. I cannot say good morning or good afternoon because you are from different continents. So, I am André Nakash. I am a uh, the managing director of uh, Assystem. Uh, Assystem is uh, a company providing a universal solution for predictive maintenance. It's uh, an all-in-one solution. It integrates multi-sensor technology, and uh, it's been developed uh, to provide an intuitive uh, predictive maintenance platform with uh, the fusion, so basically with a balance between uh, intelligence at the edge closer to the machine and intelligence uh, in the cloud. Uh, just a few words about uh, predictive maintenance in this industry, industry 4.0. Uh, maintenance has been not the first uh, one to be addressed uh, while a company developed intelligence, uh, uh, predictive intelligence, sorry, and industry 4.0. Uh, why? Because the uh, equipment infrastructure in the different companies is uh, uh, with many machines which are old, uh, with different infrastructure which were already built there, and uh, predictive maintenance for such equipment were costly and complex. Uh, but at the same time, there is a big pressure on uh, optimizing production, on increasing productivity, and uh, uh, reducing the operating cost. Up to now, it was again uh, not easy, not not af nor affordable uh, in uh, developing predictive maintenance. But there have been some changes, and the changes have been uh, done through some enablers. And the enablers are edge computing, which became possible thanks to miniaturization and new components, uh, power consumption, uh, re reduction of power consumption, and reduction of an overall. Uh, um, architecture enabling uh, product to work uh, remotely with battery, and of course, new um, wireless uh, technology like uh, LoRa, for example. The adoption is growing across different industries, and I think more and more companies are looking to uh, this predictive maintenance uh, to be implemented in their company. I wanted to start with giving you a few examples to see that it's reality. And I pick up few, which I'm going to describe in the next few minutes. Um, ArcelorMittal, that most probably many of you know, uh, is in the steel industry, in a harsh environment with many equipment, which some are new, but many of them are old uh, and uh, require uh, maintenance and uh, difficulty. So we have installed that in uh, different places, and uh, the outcome has been uh, very positive in the sense that uh, this company uh, is selecting us uh, for the long term. We've done uh, through uh, in similar industry in the aluminium. We have equipped all the uh, industrial sites of uh, Trimet in France. And uh, here again, you have a very harsh environment, uh, difficulty of uh, building a preventive or predictive maintenance. And thanks to our technology, this company has reduced by half the number of days they were stopping the production to do preventive because they were capable of having a predictivity uh, picture of their uh, maintenance 
and uh, better pro, um, schedule the, the maintenance. Another one in a totally different industry, in the food industry, animal food. And here you have fermenters, a little bit like for beers, um, where you need to continuously um, agitate the uh, content. And if your motor fail, your whole production, which could represent several tons, uh, is uh, to be uh, thrown away. And we have installed uh, our equipment in many different equipment in um, in Ajinomoto, but one of them uh, here on the agitator, on the gearbox, thanks to the lubrication, because we talk about multi-sensor technology, we don't only do vibration, but we also do ultrasound, and the ultrasound uh, detect problems of uh, lubrication. And thanks to our technology, they were able to prevent a massive failure on their gearbox. And basically, you avoid the save, you save the cost of the gearbox, but you also the save of your uh, cubic meters. You talk about here 50 cubic meters of raw material. Um, last example I wanted to show again a different industry, but in car manufacturing, uh, where Renault uh, pilot our uh, device at the beginning, and uh, were able to monitor uh, final test of electrical motor, but also some. Uh, pumps, uh, sophisticated pumps in the process. And uh, the outcome, not given by us, but by Renault, is that in less than six months, they avoid six major breakdown, 100% of the fault were detected. What does it mean, six major breakdown? In car industry, of course, you save equipment, you save parts, etc., etc. But you save, you increase your production. And an output of um, production in car manufacturing could represent million of euro, one million euro per hour. So you can imagine that predictive maintenance deployment in the industry become a real uh, uh, fact with a re real return on investment. So uh, how a system works, it's basically a split of technology between server and um, an embedded uh, intelligent at the edge technology. We have a multi-sensor multi device that integrate not only vibration three axis, but also ultrasound. And I just explained to you how imp important it was and uh, contact temperature and many other in different uh, model of our uh, sensors. All of this being integrated with the technology to capture uh, machine health, major uh, signal, send the information up to the server. And basically, by doing this, you are capable remotely, wirelessly, to basically equip a machine and monitor its health over the time and provide signals of a potential failure. So once your beacon is installed, it's glue on the equipment, the installation is completed and everything is done at the server and you can from the server visualize your machine evolution you can set up alerts to the different individual but also you can set up the beacon which means that you don't have any more to work into your factory and nowadays with the covid i think it's another uh, plus of uh, the technology is that you can totally remotely manage your equipment get the signal, analyze the signal, define which is the most probable cause, and basically send your technical team when it's the right time to go and fix the problem. Again, all in one in just a single uh, solution. So I explain uh, the first part of it. I just want to say that we have, of course, um, uh, several uh, technology um, differentiator our uh, multi-sensor technology, the fact that we have uh, an extended probe, the fact that we are working on AA standard battery, replaceable batteries, and our device works for eight years before the need to have battery change. And again, after eight years, you are welcome to change the battery and your device is again going for eight years. We are the first in the world to provide such uh, duration of battery. Uh, we have unparalleled uh, technology uh, with the smart sensors. Uh, right time, we can measure exactly, we can wake up our beacon on an event 
uh, and of course it's fully integrated to a company so our technology is future proof any tech any companies know that when they wish they can either collect the data from our server and do whatever they wish or they can totally integrate our technology within their environment we are uh, worldwide present also we are a young company uh, we have a massive uh, set of customers that trust us and uh, are using our technology just a snapshot in the next uh, two minutes before we uh, we go to questions uh, we have uh, of course when you have a predictive maintenance you want to have a dashboard and you want to have a tool for you to manage and we have different layers we have a very high level synthetic that give you a quick snapshot on where your uh, device your equipment is running and which are the issues you have another one which gives you already uh, a state of vibration ultrasound, ultrasound being lubrication. But you have also a very detailed uh, analysis that enables specialized, specialists and uh, people to have a much more uh, access, to have access to much more detailed um, data. Again, all this being on the server available for the customer if they wish to collect the data. Uh, we are on many industries and uh, the last equipment that we are just launching, which is uh, ATEX, IECX uh, proof uh, equipment uh, that enable oil and gas and chemical industry to use our technology. Uh, we can work on any kind of rotating machine and you have the list there. Of course, our solution works also on the smart building uh, business. I finish with this slide, which is another application use case. And I felt that it was uh, quite amazing because it's a very specific environment where this uh, train that stabilizes the track uh, is using our technology to monitor the tamping machine, the gearbox, the heat engine, the wheels and axles. Very, very specific uh, use case. Uh, I want to thank you for uh, your attention. Uh, thank you to participate to this event, which I want, by the way, to thank uh, Nicola for organizing it. Uh, you have my um, name, address, phone number, and of course, I welcome you to visit our website for more information. I think the next five minutes or whatever is left yeah. are for um, questions, so I'm waiting for questions. Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. It was a very good presentation. Thank you for staying these 10, 15 minutes. Yeah. And uh, uh, okay, Bibke raised the, the hand, so she has a question. Uh, Bibke, are you there? Hi, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, hi, Bibke, yes, how are you? Ah, uh, awesome. So, we know each um, other, right? Sorry, you say again? We know each other. Yes, we do. <laughs> we do, yeah, we work together. Yeah, <laughs> for a few years, yeah. Um, um yeah, I, I have a question. Um, first of all, thank you very much for that interesting presentation. And um, this is a topic, uh, well, I work at Constellium. You probably know that company because it has mm -hmm. uh, big plants in France as well. Yeah. So um, I work in the aluminum industry. Yeah. And um, uh, of course, uh, the predictive maintenance thing is um, a big topic. Um, because we have, for example, large um, DC motors that run mm -hmm. our mills. And yep. um, I, I personally work in the infrastructure segment. So um, I care for assets like uh, the cooling pond, high voltage energy um, provision, uh, stuff like that. And we already thought about implementing a solution with a LoRa. Yeah. Um, yeah, with the with LoRa gateways and the LoRa yeah. Yeah, network, let's say. And my question is, do you require an existing LoRa network already or could you help in setting one up? Yeah, we, we can help, of, of course. In fact, as I said, our solution is all in one. So when, we, mm -hmm. when you come to us, we provide you the whole solution. But oh, what you good. need to know is that you are not completely locked by us because that would be, I don't think it would be a nice uh, effort to, to not, not nice for you. Okay. Yep. So we are LoRa one compatible. So the day you decide to have your own LoRa network, you can do it. Our work product will work with it, but, uh, to start to evaluate, or even to deploy it, if you wish, we provide 
the Lora network, we provide our server on cloud. And then it's up to you with our discussion with us, how you want to either leave it like that or integrate it with your uh, own server, with your own uh, in-house in uh, um, facility. So it's really completely open and flexible. Okay, that's good. So um, you, you would be able to, let's say, provide a turnkey solution. Of course. Of course, yeah. Okay. That's easy, okay. Yeah. That's that's very good to know. Yeah. And um, I I guess I would talk with my with my colleagues and my boss, and probably would come back to you. Okay. With pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you too. Thank you, Vivke. Uh, we have just another question from Vincent Miri uh, in the chat. For the sensor applied on predictive maintenance, are they sending data in real time on every measurement on specific rate or sent by package at the end of the day or shift, for example? Yeah. Okay. So basically, we, it's a real time. Every time there is a measurement, the data are sent to the server. And after second, you have the information on the server and the server intelligence will build the trend and will tell you if there is a change in the trend. We don't leave any data on the machine because that's a mistake, because it means that you need to go and collect the data every time. So our data is real time. And you set, in predictive maintenance, you don't need to have data every five minutes. You could, but it's not relevant. I mean, what is important is to have a continuous flow of data at a periodic time. And you can decide to have it periodic in every hour, every 20 minutes, every two hours. And, uh, or, as I said, on a wake up on event, if you have a compressor, for example, you don't want to have measurement every one hour because the compressor may not work at that time, or the compressor may be just in static mode. So you want to measure to get data at the time the compressor is running and has reached its stable speed. We can do that. Great. Thank you. Uh, okay, so Andre, I think it was a very nice presentation. I think we had okay. a couple of questions, good feedbacks, I guess. Good. Yeah. I invite okay. people to add to use the reaction button so to give feedback to Andre to the presentation. Um, well, we have the uh, next company uh, uh, is uh, another reality which actually had a uh, uh, um, a message from them, they are not available for about half an hour. Uh, they will join at 12. So I will ask uh, uh, Petr from Sevio, from Czech Republic, if you're there, uh, uh, you can start to present. Petr, are you there? You can raise your hand or you can chat. Okay, probably Petr is not here yet. Uh, so I can ask, uh, I, I know that uh, Gabriele from AMA Expert I is here. Gabriele, are you there? Hello. Hi, Gabriele. How are you? I'm doing good. Sorry, I just got interrupted. Uh, by a call uh, that right now. Let me share the video. Here you are. Yeah. Yes, we can see you. Sorry, because we have this is a problem with uh, another reality, so it's going to join later. Yeah. I hope you are ready for us. I, I was almost ready, see? I was okay. just fitting my smart glasses. Good. So So you are free to present or to show us your solution? Sure, sure. So actually, I have a presentation, so I will present it. So let me share the screen. Do I have the rights? Yes, I do. I hope so. <laughs> I'm going good. To... Okay. Here you are. Yes. Excellent. Okay. So, hi, everybody. I'm Gabriele Morano. I'm the head of sales uh, for AMA in Italy. And so, let's start by introducing who is uh, AMA. Um, AMA, uh, Advanced Mobile Applications, uh, is part of the uh, Guillermo Brother uh, Corporation and maybe one of the most known uh, sister companies, Ubisoft, the one that made the uh, uh, game Assassin's Creed. Uh, we have several offices uh, around uh, the globe. We range from US to China. We have several offices in uh, Europe as well. 
So we are helping digital transformation and uh, our customers, they range from manufacturing to oil and gas and healthcare. Uh, and we have now more uh, our solutions that are rolled out in over a hundred countries. Uh, you can see some of our uh, customers listed in the, the slides. So we usually have uh, the top uh, CAC 40 uh, companies or Fortune 500. Um, so drilling down to the use cases, we have three main areas where we are providing support. So the first one is remote assistance. And here you have several types of, uh, of approaches. So you have the emergency support uh, where something breaks and you need to fix it, but you don't have the skills locally uh, on site to fix the, the problem. So what you will do is that you will equip uh, a local operator with something like those uh, smart glasses, for example, and you'll make a video call, a video collaboration with an expert that is in his office, maybe in another town or another country. Uh, so this expert will guide uh, the local uh, operator to fix the problem uh, because he will see what the local operator sees thanks to the camera that is on the glasses. Uh, and the uh, operator will understand what to do based also not only on the uh, discussion with the expert, but also on the uh, pictures that can be shown here in the small screen that is in front of his eyes. Uh, so this is the emergency support, but there is not just that. There is also commissioning or normal maintenance or setup of new machines. So every time you need a local expertise, but you don't have it, you can actually transport it virtually thanks to uh, our tools. So that's the first set. The second one is the training. And here we have two kinds of approaches. So you can have the expert that wear, for example, the glasses, uh, and will show the procedure to an audience of people who needs to learn how to do stuff. Uh, but also the opposite uh, can work. So for example, someone that needs to learn uh, a procedure will uh, use the glasses and the expert will see from his uh, remote uh, location what he's doing, uh, what the, uh, the, uh, the people that he's learning is doing and will correct him in real time. Uh, and the final one is the inspection. So every time you need to run an audit or uh, you need to work on quality assurance or compliance, uh, and you cannot have uh, the auditor on the site, then you can equip someone with you know, uh, those tools that we'll show later, and the uh, inspection will happen remotely. So let's move on uh, to our platform. So our platform is based on several modules. We have the assisted reality, uh, who is actually break down in three different uh, elements. One is the light, the essential, and the advanced. We're going to go through them uh, pretty quickly later. Uh, then we also have the uh, workflow management, which means that we are going to digitize what are the uh, instructions, the step-to-step -step instructions that are usually uh, on paper support. Uh, so we are going to see how to move them to digital. And then the final one is an online booking uh, platform that helps to organize the sessions uh, of the experts. So let's start with the uh, light solution. So the light solution is our bring your own device solution which means that you don't need to buy any device. You can just use what you have, whether it's a smartphone, a tablet, uh, or a PC. Uh, and here is how it works. Uh, you don't need, the, I mean, the very important thing is that you don't need to install any software, any app, any plugin. It will work just on the browser. So as long as you have Chrome or Safari, you can run it. Uh, in this case, we have a local operator that is using uh, maybe a tablet and he's sharing the view with the expert that is on the other side 
who sees what uh, is framing the local operator and can take pictures and can add annotations that will be shown uh, on his screen. Uh, another interesting thing is that uh, you can also invite guests via SMS or email. And because you don't need to install any application, any software, uh, the other person will just jump in the call immediately uh, as soon as it opens the, uh, the browser. Here we have the example of a one-to-one -one, uh, video collaboration, but actually we also have the conference mode, so you don't have a limit of the number of participants. So it's important to know that it's not just a video call, it's actually a video collaboration, which means that we have tools that are beyond just you know, watching the screen. Uh, so the expert can remotely control the camera um, of the uh, local operator. So he can zoom remotely, he can take pictures, uh, he can use a live pointer on the pictures and on the live video. Uh, he can also make annotations on the pictures that can be you know, arrows and you know, highlight stuff, write text. Uh, and all of that uh, is sent back to the local operator, including, for example, uploading technical documents. So this means that it's really a way to work together not just to uh, make a video call. Moving to the second solution, which is essential. Uh, this one is based on the smart glasses that you see here. So we have selected the real world uh, uh, solution. So they are rugged devices. So they are, uh, uh, they are actually uh, IP66 and dust proof and uh, they can, uh, they can um, resist to a fall from two meters on concrete, for example. So they are really uh, tough devices and they are compatible with the helmets for protection and for and with the glasses. I mean, protection glasses, are not just the prescription lenses like I have. So in this case, what is the very big advantage that you get? Well, it's basically you have the hands free. So the operator has his hands free while he's showing to the uh, expert what he's doing because the camera is mounted on his head. Uh, so we see here that we have two models. The, the usual one that I, is the one that I have now. And we also have the Atex one for the explosive uh, atmosphere. So where you have uh, a risk of explosion. Uh, also in this case, you can have a conference and you can invite and if I just, sorry, <laughs> got my phone ringing, obviously. Um, so um, let's move to the final one. So this is the most advanced video suite collaboration. So this is based on a smartphone. You see here that we have a dedicated smartphone that is connected uh, to an endoscope. Uh, this way we can see uh, inside uh, machineries. So the dedicated smartphone is really the hub of this video collaboration suite. Uh, and you can connect to it uh, several video sources. You can connect a microscope, an endoscope, um, thermal camera. We have different models. So we are really device agnostic. So whatever uh, is, uh, suits your needs, we'll find a way to connect it to our uh, solution. We also connect smart glasses. So not just the real world, but we can range to Google Glasses, Vuzix, Heuristic, and many others. So basically, this means that in this uh, video collaboration, you add something that the naked eye cannot see. For example, you know, a thermal view or uh, a very, um, very small details that you can see with a microscope or get inside uh, some uh, machine with the endoscope. Leaving now the uh, assisted reality, we move to the digitization of the procedure. So this is really important because uh, many companies are still using PDFs and, and written documents and paper and they print out. And then uh, what happens is that when the operator go and do whatever procedure, uh, work instructions, we see here several examples, uh, they need to fill uh, uh, 
the, the paper and then someone needs to put it back on some system and the review is pretty painful. Uh, here, everything is set up uh, on the back end, so you can create whatever kind of procedure with workflows um, in the, uh, on, on the server, and then the operator will have very intuitive uh, and usable application uh, that it can be used on smartphone, on tablet, on PCs, and even on smart glasses with the uh, voice commands. Uh, what we'll see the operator are two types of cards. So he can see an uh, information card that tells him what to do. So it can be text, it can be a video, it can be a picture, it can be even an audio describing something. Uh, and so he goes through you know, the uh, instructions, but there can be also input cards, a card when he's asked to input a value the pressure, the temperature, the voltage, whatever it is, or some text description. So maybe describing what is the problem that he's facing. Uh, but he can also add a picture and or add a video. So all of this will obviously go directly into uh, the server and will be immediately available uh, for the rest of the team. So it's pretty important uh, to uh, point out that this way, every procedure is always up to date because you don't have to go and look for, you know, what is the latest version? The latest version is the one that is actually loading up on your device. So I'm going to wrap up now on the values of AMA. Um, we didn't touch base on the security, but we are uh, very secure. Uh, all our connection are end-to-end -end encrypted with uh, bank level encryption uh, and or military, if you want to say. Uh, and our servers, they are GDPR compliant, but they are also health data compliant because we serve many hospitals, uh, many emergency services uh, in Europe. Uh, and we also don't store any data of our customers. This is pretty important uh, for privacy. Um, the other um, innovative approach is that we don't offer just an, a SaaS solution, but you can also have a private cloud uh, where only your uh, server will, uh, will run. Uh, but we also, uh, the final one is the on-premises installation. In this case, you really own the video conferencing solution because it's going to be installed you know, on your premises. Uh, let's touch base on the uh, multi-device support. As I mentioned, we're a software house. We are device agnostic. We are hardware ag agnostic also, which means that we're going to pick what is the best hardware that suits your needs uh, and we're going to support it. So this is uh, very important not to be locked down in a single uh, brand. Finally, I would say that we provide a constant support for technical um, issues, but also for the system integration, project management, and we're going to do uh, the, uh, all the uh, training uh, either on-site or remote uh, to make sure that you exploit the solution in the uh, best possible way. So that's it. Uh, I don't know if I fit in the 10 minutes. Um, so you have all my contact details here. Uh, feel free to contact me for uh, a live demo where I will, you know, show you how it works. Usually uh, I do that remotely. So for example, I put my uh, smart glasses or I use the dedicated device and I connect all my toys. So see, I have all the toys here on my desk. So you'll see um, how it works uh, you know, for real. So thank you very much. Great, thank you, Gabriele. Uh, thank you for the very good presentation. Uh, is there any question for Gabriele? Uh, you are free to, yes, we are Vika. Thank you, Gabriele, very interesting. Uh, let's wait uh, 30 seconds to see if anyone wants to share thoughts or questions to Gabriele. You can also raise your hand. Uh, or you can unmute yourself if you want to ask something. If you will have, if you have questions later on, uh, you are 
more than welcome to contact Gabriele and to via chat or via email or whatever. Okay, uh, so let's move on then. Thank, uh, you. thank you, Gabriele. Uh, thank you very much. We have now uh, Petr Passenger from uh, Passenger from Sevio. I don't know, Petr, if you are there. If you are not, uh, we can ask uh, uh, Apply IT. I saw you, uh, Nacho, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Welcome, thanks for joining and thanks for uh, adapting our timetable. Um, are you ready to share your solution? Or you need some more time? Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Oh, okay, all right. Here you are, I can see you also. Okay, very good, thank you. How are you? Uh, let, me, let me share my screen with you. So I don't know if you can see already my screen. Not yet. Okay. Okay. Now you can see it. Very good. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much Claire, for introduction. Uh, no problems. I think this is a problem solver in live session, so we adapt. Uh, thanks uh, everybody for for this time, and uh, I don't know as well if it's uh, we have uh, people from uh, everywhere in the world. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Ignacio Quinonero. I'm a founding partner of uh, Applied IT, and uh, I have the responsibility and the role of Chief Operating Officer. Uh, from Applied IT, uh, we, we are in uh, south of uh, Spain. We are in, um, in uh, Cadiz and, and Germany. We came from the, the problem solving and continuous improvement uh, consulting side. This is a very, very uh, bad word nowadays, but this is true. This is our origin. And uh, basically we have been carrying out uh, problem solving and continuous improvement projects uh, worldwide for the last uh, uh, 15 years myself. And I joined the team with a lot of experience on that, basically because of the initial phases of this uh, problem solving um, project, uh, the, the biggest part it's uh, basically uh, the data analysis. Uh, I'm sorry because my computer is trying to restart, but I don't want to allow him. I don't know if you can see my screen. <laughs> Anyways, let's try, I have still 14 minutes. Let, let's try to make it done. And as I said, uh, these initial phases of this problem solving project uh, was uh, the data analysis, collecting data, and analyzing the data, getting uh, clues on how to convert into the, the root causes or uh, potential solutions for an efficient uh, deviations in, in quality, downtime, or speed of the uh, performance of the uh, production lines. That's why we started five years ago with Applied IT. We uh, designed and developed different platforms to be to be very efficient uh, at the time we have to analyze the data. So having a platform, a powerful tools to, to analyze the data, to look for correlations, patterns, and to get uh, help in order to uh, convert into the, the root causes of the problems. This is uh, our origins, and uh, we can say that we, we, we go uh, much uh, faster than uh, you know, initial tools and standard tools. As I said, we are in, in, in Cadiz, it's, uh, it's our headquarter. Uh, we are also in Barcelona and Munich in Germany uh, because we have uh, a lot of customers and, and partners in Germany. And uh, basically this year, we are very happy to announce that we open up a, 
an office in, in Germany, in Munich. Basically, uh, we have implemented and, 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 and executed projects uh, worldwide, mainly in Europe and uh, Germany, but also in uh, Asia and Northern America, Mexico as well. And so what do we bring to our customers? Okay, at, at the end of the day, what we want to do is to do to perform a, an extensive or advanced analytics to, to have uh, real-time data, to be able and have it accessible, uh, to have a correlations study, monitoring, and to predict, of course, uh, problems that can happen in the future. But it's true that uh, depending on the, on the customer, depending on the level of the digitalization or technology from our customers, we have to adapt our uh, services in uh, different modules, right? So that's why we have, uh, sorry, we have uh, this interconnectivity of machines. We have um, sometimes to connect the machines to a server. We have to, sometimes the machines are only reading. And sorry, Ignacio, uh, sorry to interrupt you. I have a message from uh, Vicem from the chat. Uh, ask if you could please close the pop-up window. There is a pop-up window that uh, is shown on the video. No, it's not possible. I don't know why. Is uh, computer is pushing me to restart. Okay. No. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe. Oh, look. Uh, now I can. Maybe I can put it over here. Now maybe it's, it's better. Perfect. No. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you very much. I don't know who who <laughs> put it the message, but. Uh, it helped. All right. So uh, as I said, depending on the level of digit digitalization, sometimes we have to adapt our services because uh, at the end of the day, what we have to um, uh, deliver is a turnkey solution. Sometimes uh, machines are only reading and measuring parameters or indicators. That's why sometimes we have to uh, interconnect machines and uh, link them to, to a server. And sometimes even we have to sensorize with some partners uh, some uh, processes of the production uh, process. And then once we have everything in, in, in a structured database, in a server, then is when we can host our tools over there and um, be able to use it with the real time, the, the, the machines, the lines, the processes, whatever it is, is uh, sending the, the information to those platforms. And based on these advanced analytics, then we, we can adapt uh, for different um, uh, scenarios, uh, different modules of machine learning or an artificial intelligence. And what we like is to combine them with the augmented intelligence, which is uh, there is a human-based knowledge that cannot be written in a SQL database, right? This is the typical expert knowledge that sometimes is even difficult for them to explain uh, how they got to the solution or, or things like that. So that's why uh, we try also to, to uh, combine this human knowledge well, with all the information sent by the production or the manufacturing line. And at the end of the day, when everything is uh, customized, when everything is uh, executed and developed and implemented, we have a transition of, um, of uh, training and, and consulting. So we have a handover together to uh, get the customer, engineers, operators, line leaders to get familiar with our uh, tools. And um, uh, why, why we, we, we say this? Because at the end of the day, what the philosophy for, for our side is to capitalize on the data. It's true that right now we, everyone is looking for a holistic and uh, big data transformation, digital transformation, but it's true that already nowadays, there are many, many people and many platforms and many factories that they are already um, generating a lot of data for traceability purpose, probably, for uh, different purposes. And uh, sometimes they are experts to generate the data, invest a lot of money on generating this data, but put it in that wardrobe and or in a box, and just in case of needed, we use it. So our philosophy is to capitalize on the existing data. What kind of data do we have in a, in a, in a factory, in an in a industrial platform? So we differentiated between three different uh, level of uh, information. We have in, in one hand, the transactional data. This is the data that is um, 
um, difficult to see because they are uh, basically from these uh, transactional processes, purchasing processes, um, logistics is a uh, uh, data that is coming normally from ERP system, systems like SAP, for example, or Salesforce. So it's a very structured database, is um, very easy to link, and but there is a lot of potential to optimize those processes as well. Then we have the, the variable data. This variable data is coming purely from, from uh, manufacturing, right? And uh, this is where uh, everyone is putting the, the, the finger to optimize, to be more efficient, to monitor, and to get these uh, predictive models. And then, of course, we do, we do not forget these uh, human-based knowledge that I mentioned in my uh, past slide. This is the, 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 the knowledge, the information from experts that is difficult to put it in an SQL server. So we have developed as well, uh, basically, no tree-based uh, application, web application, to uh, link those information into the uh, entire platform. And so at the end of the day, we like to transform the data into real knowledge. How do we do it? Uh, before we go to a, a case study, maybe, or a presentation of the different products that we have. So uh, normally we have 75% of the existing products that we uh, implemented uh, as it is, but it's true that uh, uh, the big customers, they are not going to adapt to your products. So we do it, and that's why 25% of the development is always adapted to the processes, to the products, or the corporate needs for the customers. And so basically, we have uh, in three uh, general steps, we have at the beginning, we have this key data uh, coming from independent systems, from an MES, from an SAP, from a uh, PLCs directly, some existing databases, uh, CMM machines, laboratories, and so on. We unified everything into a common database or a common data lake, and we located that in a server. And for what? For what is the reason? To have, sorry, to have um, a dashboard, to have advanced analytics, to have a 24 hours monitoring with a smart alert system configuration and visualization of the key process parameters. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna just go briefly to some of our customers. We are mainly in Germany, as we said, but uh, we are lucky to, to be in, in most of the most important tier ones for automotive in, in Germany. And uh, we always uh, go from a pilot, pilot project to an escalable industrialization offer that can be uh, implemented then in, in different areas of the plant or different uh, uh, plants in the world. Our solution, as I said, is uh, if we see a structure of the solution, sorry, it's uh, basically to have from different channels, different sources of information, we have, uh, for example, these ERP systems, uh, SAP, Salesforce, CoreLogic, already existing files. It's true that each department, quality department, design department, production, uh, engineering, they have their, their own databases. They have their own Excel files, uh, inspections, and so on, that we can also, with some uh, RPA systems, to uh, automize and get all the data that uh, every time there is a new update on this file, so it's transferring all the new information to this uh, common data lake. And it's true that this also sometimes assisting SQL servers, Oracle servers for, from different areas of the, of the company. And sometimes as well, we have uh, to link directly to, to some uh, PLCs, to uh, CMM machines, to different uh, formats, different uh, protocols and, and systems. And as I said, we put it in a common data lake and to be able to have correlations studies, monitoring, looking for patterns, and even sometimes having the system working for you in the background, alerting you with deviations or when a deviation can be produced early in time. 
if we go uh, through the different products that we have, uh, basically we, we have these three uh, main modules that I mentioned is uh, the variable data. We have the RTM is a desktop uh, application. It's a very uh, powerful tool to have uh, the, the system running in the background uh, to do automated uh, analysis, looking for uh, deviations, looking for uh, correlations, making comparisons of families of variations, and is very powerful for quality engineers or design engineers, product engineers. Then we have the Transflow, is uh, this application web-based that is gonna let us know on these transactional processes, what are the bottlenecks, uh, what are the, the main flows of the system? Uh, because sometimes uh, it's, it's true that when you go to a manufacturing line, you can see machines running, operators working, and you can see the activity. But when you go to an office with maybe 100 engineers doing transactions or, uh, or working on a computer, sometimes it's difficult to see uh, what are the flows uh, that is uh, on their hands. And then we have this also a function model a tool that combines uh, both of the of the of these previous applications. This is uh, where we would like to structure all the information from the experts and uh, have everything in an structure database in a structure no tree uh, application to uh, be able to have uh, accessible for everybody. Then we have some other tools like a dashboards, different mappings to, to insert uh, defects and doing analysis and, and looking for these uh, uh, root causes for big issues. And uh, in this case here, we have a, a wind cover of a, an airplane and a project that we, that we did. And basically all these uh, different applications we like to, to um, um, complement the, the three main modules that we have, variable data, transactional data, and human-based knowledge. I'm gonna go uh, briefly through some of the, of the uh, functionalities of uh, the RTM. Uh, we can have instant access data, obviously, a single uh, rancher, we can have CPK analysis, and everything that we want is, nobody needs to be a guru of uh, data, no, nobody needs to be a data scientist, okay? Is everything everything uh, dynamically linked and no inserting too much data, it's just playing around. We can have multivary graphs to see differences between families of variations. We can have a special event analysis by introducing a single serial number. This platform is gonna go through the entire process value stream downstream to see why sometimes this uh, serial number is uh, special. And oh, and actually we had some problem with, uh, with Ignacio. Um, so let's see, I think that his computer started. Uh, maybe we can give him uh, uh, some few minutes when he's back. Uh, in the meantime, we can check. Uh, we can check if uh, we have uh, Christina from another reality. Christina, are you with us? If not, uh, if not, uh, uh, we should have Petr. Passinger from Sedio, uh, good solution from Czech Republic, actually. Um, if not, uh, well, I will, uh, uh, let's wait a couple of uh, uh, minutes. Otherwise I will introduce uh, Skill4i, which is a new learning platform for, uh, uh, for industrial skills, especially focused on uh, um, on industry 4.0 topics. Uh, let's, uh, let's start with, uh, I will share my screen uh, so we can talk about uh, my solution. 
Uh, I hope you guys, you can see the screen. Uh, so this is the platform called skills for i So what was the problem? When I work in companies and manufacturing companies, sometimes it was very difficult to find, uh, to find out uh, uh, ways uh, to learn uh, um, to learn new skills, especially a very, with a very practical, uh, concrete approach, uh, because most of the skills in this uh, business are, uh, let's say, very practical and difficult to share. So what I wanted to do is to give the opportunity to everyone worldwide to, to, to have a flexible way to learn manufacturing skills, the skills that are normally shared worldwide. Therefore, I decided to create this platform called Skills for I. So how it works? So this is a, it's called asynchronous platform, which means that is not, you don't have a live uh, uh, webinars like we are doing now, uh, but uh, you subscribe, you buy a course, uh, and then uh, you have, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, do your lessons uh, uh, whenever you have time or uh, uh, when you're in your spare time, when you have half an hour. Also because all lessons are designed to last no more than 30 minutes, which means it's very suitable, very good for people uh, who wants to, for example, to have half an hour time, so they have time to learn very quickly. So just let me uh, show quickly my platform. Um, so on the right hand side, you can see uh, special skills you need. So we have, for example, here three courses about additive manufacturing, one course is about artificial intelligence and so on. So in this platform, you, you can find uh, uh, online courses. Um, Okay, we have Ignacio, sorry Ignacio, I took over, uh, took over, you, I can give you all five more minutes later. Uh, so I just started my presentation about skills for i so please wait 15 minutes to continue your, uh, your, uh, your, uh, your solution, to present your solution. I think you were kicked out by the system uh, looking at the message you had. Anyway, I will uh, continue with this explanation. So in this platform, you can uh, uh, find online courses, uh, but also uh, you, can, uh, uh, pro you can find solutions for uh, uh, enterprises, which means I will show you, it's a, uh, you can create groups and you can learn a group of people which are monitored uh, their progresses by a, a group leader. At the moment, uh, all the, pl the platform is available, full, uh, full available in English and Italian. Now we are implementing it in, Sp in Spanish with our Mexican partner. We have more than 30 countries who are applied, who enrolled in our courses. And as I said, you can't find only single courses, but also downloadable material like eBooks or PowerPoints or Excel files, templates, uh, for example, we have a, a, a innovation management toolkit with uh, more than 25 uh, Excel files or templates which are uh, useful for your daily work in innovation management. But we have also bundle course, so you can buy group uh, a collection of course and you can save money and you have some master classes, so a collection of uh, um, a collection of courses uh, about uh, um, um, about a specific topic. Here are some of the course. So if you just go to our catalog, uh, you can see how it works. So here you can select the uh, the courses you want. So you can filter by price and you automatically you will see uh, for example only prices between zero and uh, 190 million euros and uh, you can filter by average rating you can filter by category download or downloadable or online course by uh, single product or a bundle or master class in this case you don't see master class because they are more expensive so if you filter remove the filter, uh, 
you will see uh, also masterclass and recently viewed. So just uh, uh, let's try to see how these uh, uh, courses look like. So let's try to click on our Industry 4.0 masterclass. Um, so this is an example of our masterclass, uh, which includes uh, eight different courses about Industry 4.0. Uh, here there is a quick description and here you can see the, co the course outline. So here are all the eight courses and here you can see all the course content. So if you expand, you can see each lesson is organized as a, can have different, each lesson has a quiz at the end. So to pass to the next lesson, you have to pass the quiz. Some lessons also have additional topics. So if the lesson is too long, more than let's say 30, 45 minutes is divided into sub lessons that are called topics. And um, for example, here are the nine key technologies. So the first uh, lesson of each course is a uh, sample. So it's uh, available for free. For example, uh, let's, uh, let's check the first, uh, the first lesson. At the moment, uh, we are we are other joiners are joining, but uh, let's continue. So, for example, here this is the first lesson. It lasts 30 minutes, and also you have sometimes you have the QR code where you have virtual assistant where if you can use uh, with your mobile phone. You can additional information about the topic. You will have a mix of videos, uh, text, uh, icons, and charts, images additional videos and then at the end you have a list of references so if you want to uh, um, to deepen uh, to go more in details about some topics you can uh, of course you can uh, link here or you can find additional information then you have a quiz so you pass the quiz go to the next um, lesson when you pass the file the entire um, a course, you will get a certificate of attendance. Of course, first you have a final test and then you have a final certificate of attendance. Of course, when you pass quizzes, you can collect credits or when you pass some specific topics, you will collect credits with these credits, you can have additional discounts on other courses. But uh, there are also other services uh, you can exploit with this platform. So we saw enrolling a course so uh, let's just give me the opportunity. Uh, you saw more or less how the course are structured, but uh, uh, as I said, are structured lessons and topics, and uh, each lesson and topics have a combination, a mix of text, pictures, videos, downloads. So sometimes you can download uh, materials, links, and augmented reality. You have quizzing at the end, some quizzes at the end of each lesson. You can collect badges. So when you pass a specific course or specific topics inside the course, you can collect badges. And then you have a reference list at the end. You have a final summary. So this is very important before the final test. It's a final summary that normally lasts 30 minutes with the key concept for each course. And then the final test, you can collect credits and you get a final certificate. So let's go back to our services. We said we can find the downloadable materials and uh, uh, you can also require a request a course. So if you are a company and you want to uh, provide some training in this way, a learning, a synchronous a learning um, uh, uh, on our platform, you can, we can create the course, you, you can create the course and will be available only for your uh, company. You can also create your own course and sell your courses on the platform, but also you can build your group or you can be a refer, a refer so you can link the course to your uh, website in exchange for a fee. This is what I wanted to show uh, before uh, additional question and answers. Uh, you can build your class. So as I said, this is a solution that is very suitable for companies or organizations especially now that you can't have training sessions live face-to-face -face because of COVID situations. Uh, so you can enroll people in a group. You can decide how many people and how, ma how many courses you want to enroll and you can assign a group leader. 
So a group leader can check progresses. You can also create bundles, as I said, different type of courses, and you select just the, the, the amount of seats you need. And of course, uh, with this solution, you save money because more courses and more people you have, less, mm, less money you pay. Uh, to create a group is very simple. Uh, uh, I will show you if you go to enterprises. Uh, you just enter your group name, you select the number of seats, let's say five or let's say 10. You have additional discounts, uh, let's say test. And then you select a different courses. So at the moment you have to select, for example, some course in English. And which means that all the people enrolled must, uh, 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 must uh, pass the test for this quizzes. I don't know, just as an example, at the end, uh, you will have a, a subtotal of 2000 euro because you selected some courses for 10 people. And we will have a 20% uh, book discount, which means that you are going to pay 20% less and you add to cart, which means that uh, uh, the, the, um, the group leader then can monitor progresses, which means that can see uh, if they, the people in the group uh, can progress through the course, you can see if people uh, uh, pass the quizzes and which percentage um, and so on. And also there is a possibility if you go back to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the sample question, uh, to the sample lesson, uh, if there is something unclear in the lesson, you can write uh, a message at the bottom and then uh, uh, the, the teacher, the, the trainer will reply you to, to answer the questions or your, your doubt. Uh, here you can find uh, uh, support. So if you want to create courses, there is a section which takes you how to create courses. And uh, this is basically, that's it. As I said, the affiliation program, you can uh, uh, re register yourself uh, and uh, you can create the, the specific link for you and put on your website. So if people access and buy courses through your website in the next 30 days, you will get uh, a certain percentage. Uh, I think that's it from my side. Um, if you have any questions, um, you are free to, to type any question at the moment. Um, if not, uh, if not uh, uh, Ignacio, you can continue your presentation from where you finished. Okay, uh, sorry, sorry, but uh, my laptop pushed me to, yeah. to restart with the, without the any other on. option. Exactly, <laughs> but no worries, we are flexible, so. Okay, so, sorry for that. All right, let me share again my screen and I'm gonna be uh, able to finalize my, my uh, presentation. Okay, uh, I was uh, trying to explain some of the main tools or functionalities within the RTM uh, platform desktop application. This is always in real time analysis that we like to perform or like to uh, give to the engineers to have the opportunity to do this kind of analysis. And uh, I was here in this special event, very useful uh, for maybe a scrap uh, analysis to try to look what was the, the cause of the problem because here as I was saying uh, you introduce the serial number with a scan or by hand and it's going to identify on which parameters of the entire value stream uh, there was a speciality on this um, a specific serial number. Uh, this is also very useful when we have from the customer maybe a field return from a final user and uh, they identified a dozen of uh, serial numbers that they had issues and uh, so in, we introduce it here and uh, is automatically looking for anomalies of this serial number is looking for single parameters but also for uh, multiple parameters and not all, only for a single serial number, it can be done also for entire family of serial numbers. Uh, SPC monitoring, uh, CP and CPK analysis, 
regression analysis, and uh, also we have this smart alert system that is basically once we know uh, what are the the key uh, drivers of some uh, quality deviations or downtime deviation, we can put those different models, single parameters into this watchdog list. And we say, okay, I want this, this, and this, or this model to uh, be um, getting monitor in, uh, you can define the sequence or the, the frequency of this monitoring. And as soon as we get certain levels, uh, it's uh, gonna alert someone by mail, by text message, or uh, I don't know, some of the applications that they, they are using. And this is very, very helpful because it's gonna let the platform run in the background and just advising you when this is happening. Sometimes a problem is when, when uh, someone gets into the solution of a problem, uh, you understand the problem, you maybe try to implement a corrective action or solution, and then as soon as you uh, move some, some, uh, somewhere else, uh, the, the problem occurs again. So with this functionality, uh, we, we try to give the, the right uh, tools to those kind of persons to have everything in the radar. Then we implement everything, some main functionality is not very deep analytical uh, analysis or analytical uh, tools. And we the basic things, we can put it in a dashboard in a web-based application and to have uh, this uh, cycle time uh, monitoring and seeing uh, how the, the machines or the stations are moving. Uh, this was on Continental. Some uh, also, uh, we can have a, a traceability system, a quality system to see if there was a scrap, a rejected or a reprocessed uh, uh, parts. Uh, we can have also the special event uh, tool that I uh, mentioned before and some other uh, functionalities in this web-based dashboard. And why we do that? Because at the end of the day, uh, a continuous improvement is a, is a, uh, a must in every single uh, corporation. And you have to make it with uh, less time, less effort, and being at the end of the, of the day, more efficient at that time. For transaction analytics, we have also a web-based application. We have uh, um, a map of all those flows or those process flows, and we can have a very nice uh, tool to identify, as I said, more bottlenecks. As I said, maybe there was there are some resources that are overloaded, and even you can you can see how much ongoing processes you have at this moment. Uh, you can have a different Pareto's of uh, different metrics. You can have everything uh, measured by by um, money, by euros, dollars, or even by by time or by people at the end of the day. And uh, for what we, we want or the customer requiring this at the end of the day to, to also identify losses. They want also to optimize their transactional processes to get transparency of them and at the end of the day to be more profitable. Last but not least, we, we have this human knowledge structuring uh, for expert uh, information. Ignacio, sorry, we are just uh, running a little bit out of time. So if you're just a couple of minutes yes. to finalize. So this is the human uh, knowledge uh, node tree um, application, basically structuring everything on a node tree. And if you uh, uh, let me just uh, one minute explain uh, one of the case studies that we had. We had in, in Airbus aerospace industry, we have a project in order to monitor key process parameter, monitor them to look for correlations and to have them in a watch list and in the rather to have a, a, a smart alert system uh, tool. At the end of the day, we had different uh, data sources to put it in our RTN and at the end of the day uh, have those uh, analysis performed. This is the, the last slide that I'm gonna show. This is normally how we structure our um, uh, projects. We have the definition of the data architecture. We have to clean up uh, all the data and uh, to filter out 
what is not uh, necessary basically, and it's gonna have uh, a lot of waste in our system, then we implement the RGM analytical software. We develop different modules for the customer and we together with the customer uh, do the preliminary analysis and the system training. This is from uh, all from our side. Uh, I'm running out of time. Uh, I expect uh, that uh, I, was, I was not too fast and there was not too much information. If someone is requiring some uh, more detailed information or demonstration of one of our tools, please feel free to uh, contact me and uh, yeah, I'm gonna be pleased to support you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ignacio. If anyone uh, has questions uh, about that, I think there was a question from Enrico before uh, at 12, uh, yes. Um, capitalization is on data or in, in, or in information knowledge. I think previously we, you mentioned about capitalization. Uh, I don't know now if you remember the uh, what you said. Uh, I think I don't know if Enrico, you want to um, articulate more your questions. Enrico, are you there? Uh, okay. Uh, if there are, if you have questions, you can raise your hand. Dika said, "Very impressive. Thank you." Yes, I think so. It's, uh, I think I, I really like this uh, uh, this solution as well. Uh, that's why I ask Ignacio to 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 present to our um, to our audience. So Ignacio, if you if you feel like you can uh, share your PDF in the chat, or you can send me so I can share uh, the presentation to to the audience, also to the people who didn't attend and now but uh, subscribe for this event. Okay, uh, I'll I'll share that with uh, with you, Nicola, and okay. with uh, whoever is requiring that. No problem. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Ignacio. Thanks a lot, to everybody. Um, so now uh, we have, uh, uh, we should have uh, um, Christina from another reality. Um, Christina, are you available uh, to present? Uh, so Christina is from this company, another reality was a very, uh, they offer a very good solutions focused on augmented and uh, virtual reality uh, based in Italy. Uh, she had a problem to present earlier. Um, Christina, are you there? Yeah, Nicola, uh, I'm searching for Lorenzo that okay. is our CEO for the presentation because I Yes. I I have some problem with my with my computer. So okay, <laughs> okay. In the meantime, uh, thanks, Christina, for letting us know. Uh, uh, in the meantime, uh, if anyone wants to share thoughts about uh, uh, the presentation, what you saw today, you can unmute yourself, uh, or you can digit. Uh, you can uh, you can write your questions in the chat. Uh, I also take the opportunity to uh, to invite you, if you have time, to our second session today at 5 p.m. and GMT plus one. Uh, um, uh, where we, we can find other, uh, there are there will be other solutions on the market. Uh, mostly from US and Canada, because it's the time was more suitable for them, of course, uh, but also other uh, from Europe, uh, from Spain, for example. Uh, we will have VKS up, we, can, we will have Insuit Emiris from Spain. Um, 
So, uh, okay, Christina, you uh, let me know when you're ready. In any case, in any case, uh, I will share with you all the presentation you saw today uh, by email, replying to the invite I send you. Uh, and also feel free to contact uh, me uh, if you need uh, um, any, any details, additional contacts um, about the presentation, about the people who presented today. Let's wait a couple of minutes for Christina. Um, so, if you want, uh, if you want, just to go to the uh, participant panel and uh, ask using the button question, yes or no. Uh, my question is: Did you find this event or some solutions interesting for your uh, for application in your factory? You can use the yes, thanks, Vitke. Uh, okay, uh, yes, I think for Vitke, she asked about the uh, predictive maintenance solutions, but uh, I'm also sure that other solutions are uh, concrete and ready to be implemented uh, in the market. Uh, well, all, everything we saw today was available, is available, and so you're free to contact them. Listen, yes, thanks. Um, Christina, do you have, do you need a couple more minutes? Yes, Doc, uh, I'm sorry, Lorenz is not uh, answering me, so. <laughs> okay. Maybe maybe it's better that I I try to to present by myself. <laughs> we can support you. No worries. <laughs> Thank I, you. I, really, I would really like you to present because it's uh, really I think your the solution you're offering is quite outstanding from my perspective, and it's not easy to find something like that on the market. So yeah, please try. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wait for me. So I think you have just to, to share screen. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yes. Do you see can, my we can see your uh, your your presentation? Okay. Perfect. Okay. So um hello <laughs> to everyone. And um we we are uh, we are software developers. And uh, we are uh, we are based uh, in uh, in Italy. So uh, we are not an agency or a web agency. So uh, we have a design centered approach. So we we can match creativity and uh, design skills. And uh, our design tries to to meet the needs of the final user. And uh, this is a critically important uh, trait in. Uh, in our world, because uh, since we create solutions for natural interaction technologies, uh, this is very, very important. So uh, as you can see from this slide, we match the creativity, the technology, the technology expertise and the uh, human-centered uh, approach. So we work on game engine. And uh, so we, we called on uh, C++ and uh, C Sharp using so the two main uh, game engine that uh, are Unity and uh, Unreal. I don't know if you know these uh, technologies. So um, we we use immersive technologies since uh, the 2014, and um, we use uh, augmented reality, mixed reality, and virtual reality. You know to create the project. So uh, what we use, we we develop our projects uh, on any device. So we use a smartphone and WebGL, uh, multi-touch and projections, or uh, using body tracking. And obviously, we develop our projects uh, on uh, VR and MR headsets. So 
why we are so special, let's say, because uh, we use immersive technology, but uh, we have a strong uh, background of, uh, of gaming because uh, all the guys that uh, develop uh, the projects are uh, gamers. <laughs> Not me, because I'm an, I'm an engineer, so <laughs> I'm not a gamer, but uh, for sure, all, uh, all the guys that uh, use these technologies are from a uh, gaming world. So we bring uh, innovation inside uh, companies. So we speak uh, sometimes with the, um, the marketing team, the training team, the operations and manufacturing team or the innovation and the information technology team. So we, uh, we have uh, two big worlds, okay, in, in, this, um, in this environment. And uh, one world uh, is the, the customer experience and the one world is the human operations. Uh, what we develop in the customer experience world, uh, we develop uh, advert games. So uh, games that are um, focused on brand engagement or uh, games that are, uh, you know, uh, are made for lead generation and, uh, and conversion. Uh, we work also with the digital and the physical, digital experiences, sorry, <laughs> my Italian comes out. <laughs> and um, so we, we work for, uh, for create events, um, for create promotion, and uh, obviously also to, to create a tourism application okay, for uh, connection and education. Um, another aspect of our uh, our work is that to you know to create uh, uh, dematerialization uh, for our companies. So we realized, uh, as you as you can see uh, on the right, we we, we realized a um, virtual showroom for uh, Frette, and uh, we work for Luxottica to create, uh, you know, the, the, the materialization uh, for, uh, for their world, so glasses. And uh, we, we, we realized uh, one month ago um, a platform for Brembo. Uh, you, you can find this, uh, this platform uh, uh, on web um, for them. And uh, they they needed this uh, this platform, you know, because they they need to create events, uh, convention, and uh, and so on. The second world is the human operations. So uh, we work uh, with the companies that uh, that are more technical. So we create the training or uh, learning games. Uh, or uh, you know something something that can help with the simulation of uh, of many operations, okay, inside the the companies. Uh, another another aspect is the special collaboration. So we realized the virtual academy for um, for the medical world and uh, also for uh, technical world. For example. Uh, for Nokia, we realized a virtual academy where people can meet together and uh, work uh, together to, you know, to create a project or to, to discuss about uh, topics. Um, another aspect is the, the materialization, the support the materialization. So we use augmented reality uh, to help people to, to create, uh, you know, a biggest uh, uh, knowledge about what they are to do in, uh, in technical field, but uh, the main the main aspect uh, of uh, you know the, the sorry the, the, the biggest uh, um, innovation that we we bring is in uh, you know in technical field. So we use immersive digital twins to recreate and to help industry 4.0. Uh, to you know, to 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 help them in the simulation, product and process improvements, 
or uh, we create interactive control rooms. So everything that you can uh, think about you know, technical aspects can be improved with this technology, with augmented reality and uh, virtual reality. And uh, in these days, uh, this is why you know, we, 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 we are, uh, everyone uh, is at home now. So we decided to, to invest uh, our, our expertise uh, to create a platform for remote interactions. And this platform will be uh, will be ready, I suppose, in uh, January, and uh, will have help companies to create a, a academy digital platform. Uh, will help uh, um, you know companies to create convention and uh, uh, other things that can match uh, the company with uh, with the customers. And uh, the final um, the final aspect of this uh, platform will be. Uh, recreate uh, a really workplace uh, where people can meet together and uh, to, you know, to have some meetings uh, or uh, uh, design thinking uh, sessions uh, and, uh, and so on. We have also um, an academy, so we teach um, companies how to manage uh, immersive technologies. As you can see, we have different um, type of academies. So we have one uh, focused uh, on um, XR, so uh, all, all that um, relates uh, uh, on mixed reality, augmented reality, and virtual reality. We have an academy for industry 4.0 when we teach uh, uh, people how to manage these uh, technologies. Um, especially for industry 4.0. And uh, we have, uh, you know, other two types of academies that are uh, focused on marketing and on uh, soft skills. So this is it. We, we use immersive technology to create uh, uh, engagement for people and to help companies to, to realize their technical needs. So, Nicola, thanks. thanks. <laughs> I'm sorry for, for my English because I, I manage only Italian clients. So. No worries, no worries. It was perfect, I apologize I guess. so much. No, no, it was this. great. Come on, why? It was, it was great, I guess. Uh, thanks, you. Th thanks for sharing uh, your presentation. Uh, I really like uh, the application uh, focus on industry, digital twin, and so on. Uh, because nobody, especially now in this meeting, uh, in this event, uh, uh, presents something similar to what you're offering. Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to, uh, to ask now, Christina. Um, uh, just if, if you want just to raise your hand or you, have, you can just type your question in the chat. Christina, if you want, you can share the presentation with me, so then I can share uh, share it with uh, all the audience, also for pe uh, the people who didn't attend today. Yeah, no problem. In the beginning, so you this presentation a... is uh, is free. Yeah, good. Uh, yes, as I, as I presented at the beginning, we, we about twenty nine countries subscribed for this event, uh, and eighty people. But okay, now we have only ten participants. Uh, but anyway, I will share the presentation with the people who subscribe, and uh, of course, I hope you, you will get some contacts from this event. If you guys, if you don't have any any other questions, if you don't don't want to share anything, any any other thoughts, uh, I think we are running out of time. It's almost uh, one now. Thanks. This is thanks, Christina. This is the presentation for people who want to. Uh, to download it. Yeah, I sent the presentation only to you, but uh, wait a minute. I'm okay, sure. yes, to me. I will share it. Perfect. Uh, yes. Uh, so if anyone wants to add something, otherwise, uh, thank you all to attend this event. I hope it fulfilled your expectation. As I said, we have another session uh, at five uh, with, with other solutions. If you want, you are free to contact me. I think you have already the link, but you can uh, register or you can contact me 
for additional information. Uh, thank you again, everyone. And thank you, Nicola. Thank you, Gabriele. Thank you, everyone. And I hope to see you back uh, for another event or uh, contact me if you need additional uh, information about new technologies available on the market. Thanks and have a nice day. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.